Hi everyone, I am Heather from GroundedApproach.com. I'm a GAPS practitioner and I have with me Madeline today from Homesteading Heartland. She is an amazing GAPS overcomer. She had fibromyalgia, she had IBS, she had about a million symptoms, everything you can imagine, fatigue, exhaustion, body pain, everything was undiagnosed. Well, she got diagnosis, but nothing could help her. It was just, this is your lot in life. You're going to decline. She has like a really inspirational story because yeah, she was told by everyone that she's not going to improve and there's nothing that she could do. And then here she is now, she did the GAPS diet and now she's passionate about like homesteading and nutrition and the GAPS diet. And you can follow her on Instagram. She's homesteading heartland. Got that right. And yeah, I'm just really excited to share her story because I know it's going to be really helpful, especially for people who have fibromyalgia or IBS or any of those other kind of like blanket, potentially autoimmune, potentially this, even things with like Lyme, just that the unexplained pain and the unexplained exhaustion, a lot of those kind of are, well, they're interconnected and they're a gut issue. So um, yeah, it's going to be so cool talking to her today. She's going to share her story and yeah, soon she's going to become a GAPS coach and she's going to help so many people that are like in her shoes where she was back then. So um, did I miss anything? No, nope, that was great. That okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so let's just dive into it. What was your childhood like? Like in it terms was, of In terms of health, yes. Um, I actually, I often got told when I grew up that I was a pretty sick baby. Um, often I... I got told like by my mom, my dad, I was just constantly sick, battling, you know, just colds, not like like a specific diagnosis per se when I was young, but you know, cold, sickness, stomach stuff. Um, and I know that I was often given antibiotics to treat, often given um, Tylenol or ibuprofen to treat as well, or to suppress fevers, all of that things, all of those things too. Um, and then along with that, um, I was fully VAXED. Um, <laughs> As a child, as a child, not as I like grew up and as I'm old now, but as a child, I was too. So that's kind of how uh, my childhood was like as well. And then when it comes to eating food, um, we had pretty much a standard American diet. We did eat fast food a lot growing up, you know, typical McDonald's, Happy Meals, all of that. Yeah. Um, and then we did eat food at home, but a lot of it was the boxed processed things, you know, like boxed rice or boxed mashed potatoes, boxed like more like, you know, like the condiment type of, you know, box stuff. That's usually a lot. Um, my dad was a hunter. Um, he, I actually grew up hunting with him a couple of times. So we did have a lot of fresh game. I often ate venison. So that was like a very great, great aspect of my childhood as well in terms of nutrition and eating, grew up eating a lot of venison and meat. Um, but yeah, but that was basically like my childhood. So yeah, just kind of like a sick child, I guess, more like a baby sense, you know, but as I grew up, a lot of my issues didn't start until my senior year of high school, basically. Wow. Okay. So what happened your senior year of high school? Um, so I, it's so funny. I just remember it so specifically. So I going into my senior year, I actually broke my hand. I was in cheerleading and stuff. So I ended up just stopping all of that. I, I was in just a lot of pain from, you know, breaking my hand. Um, and it just slowly got worse and worse. Um, I started getting body pain and along with, I, I also grew up, I broke in my elbow when I was younger too. And I've sprained oh really that's I have a scar you got the scar I have like yeah yeah that's funny we got it on the opposite yours on the outside mine's on the inside um but yeah I broke my elbow I was in like gymnastics and cheer growing up um and then I often sprained things like I was always hurting my ankles my wrists of course being in cheer too they were just constantly hurting sprained my back was always hurting and this was like during my senior year like it just was getting worse and then along with that it's so crazy because I just remember it so specifically because one of the first tests I got done was actually one of those tilt table tests because I was so dizzy all the time. I was going like I would be walking and I would just get super dizzy and I feel like I was going to faint and I would have to sit down. Otherwise, I would faint. And um, I only fainted like once or twice, like when, at that age, like at a younger age. And then as I got older, like when I moved to Illinois, I fainted actually on the train once I fainted. There was a couple different places where I've just randomly, just all of a sudden this like dizziness overcame me. So I dealt with that. Like that was one of the first symptoms along with the body pain was that dizziness and lightheadedness, just very disorienting too. Cause I would be in the, I, I would be so normal. And then all of a sudden I just be like, Oh, Oh, like, Oh my gosh, something's happening. Um, so yeah, they thought that I had 
what was it that pots thing they they tr that's what that tilt table test was for to see if like you had the pots but they said that i didn't have that um i actually my sister has that my sister has diagnosed of pots the postio or i don't know how to say it specifically it's like a that's like an acronym for what it means it's another different issue with like your something I, I don't I don't have it so I don't I don't know the specifics um but yeah that's what that was for and so I ended up moving out to Illinois for my um schooling to go to Paul Mitchell Cosmetology and it just got worse basically from there so yeah that was kind of like the upbringing of all of that you know and where my sickness started and how it all kind of came to be and then when I moved away it just it just got worse it just got worse and how old were you then um when I moved so I graduated 2016 and then I moved out here the end of, or the beginning of 2017 or something like, yeah, around that time. I think I was 17 or 18 around that time. And my senior year, I was like 16, 17. I know for sure. But yeah. Okay. And then, so you had like the dizziness and tons of other things and like mm -hmm. body pain. How did yeah. it happen? Yeah, well, so it, it's, it's crazy because I started to go to school in my cosmetology school and that was pretty rigorous. I mean, we worked on clients like at the school. So it was like a, you were working while you were going to school too. So we would have like class time and then we would work on clients and it was just each, basically like each month, I just had noticed more and more. One, the, the digestive issues started to come up too. I started getting really nauseous and vomity too, all the time, stomach issues. And then aside from that, everything would hurt. Like holding my arms up, couldn't do it. Like it, it just got so hard. Like, and this is probably like a year into all this pain, like progressing if, from what I'm about to say. Like it used to be so bad, like doing this one, two, three, I would be crying. Wow. Like I would be crying. Like I'm, I, and I, that's not an exaggeration. I'm just trying to paint the picture. Like I genuinely couldn't do this for longer than this. Like this would be like having me in tears. I would be sobbing. Oh. Yeah. And it, it was terrible. And to imagine to paint that picture even more, like I was going to hair school. So I had to cut hair. I had to, and oh. I also started noticing at that exact same time when I, you know, all the body pains were getting worse as I was going through school, my grip, this was the biggest thing that just ruined my world for me. I was going to hair school. I lost my grip. Like I couldn't like, hold anything like it hurt it would hurt it caused my hands so much pain I couldn't open things anymore all that it just started like it felt like my hand like my hands were deteriorating kind of like that's how it felt to me because I you know I'm going to school for being able to you know use tension with my fingers to cut hair and I started to not be able to do that like doing perms would like kill me I would cry want to cry afterwards because of how bad my hand pain would be and so I like the body pain and that hand pain was the first thing that really was like scary to me that that was like, okay, this is like, like something's going on, you know, like, whoa, like this is more than just I'm sick every once in a while or I feel crappy or you know what I mean? Like this was like something's going on here. And from that point on, I was just like, I don't know, I'm, I know something's wrong, but I just couldn't tell at all. Like I had no, I had no idea. I didn't really know what to do. I didn't, I know I wasn't going to doctors at that time either. Like while I was going to school, I wasn't seeing any doctors. So I was just living through it basically around that time. Wow. And so then I'm assuming it got worse because you said you ended up going to like the Mayo Clinic and doing some other kind of experimental things and getting diagnoses. So what happened with that? Yeah, so actually I ended up, like what, what level of, how bad did it get when you had oh. to like going there? Oh, it was like 10 out of 10 in my opinion. I mean, I'm being serious. Like it, most days, like I would wake up and it would just be immediate tears or just, that's what I wanted to do all day was just cry out of ag like agony. Yeah. Like, and another, I love showing people how it used to be for me. Cause this is like, so that like, this is how bad it was. Like the pain that I was experiencing, like just doing that. I would cry like that would hurt so bad and it's beautiful I could do this all I want now it doesn't hurt at all it's great it's great it doesn't hurt at all I can do this someone can tap me and it won't hurt so bad yeah like my boyfriend he used to have to be very like gentle and, it, and it's it's hard you know imagine like you not being able you know hugging someone tight because it hurts them and so yeah that was a lot to go through but yeah definitely a 10 because when I went to Mayo Clinic it was like an all-time like the all-time high of everything. My pain was at its all-time high. 
um, and how I got to that point, how I got to Mayo Clinic. So I was going to school. I finished schooling. I started a job at a hair salon and I actually, I had met Ryan around, you know, a little bit before that, my boyfriend that I'm with now. Um, his mother had a lot of the same issues as me. And she was like, well, you know, maybe you should see a doctor just because that's what she was doing at the time. She's actually on gaps now healing. Um, awesome. Yeah, she's on gaps now and she's doing great. But um, before, you know, before we, either of us knew about this, she suggested me to see her doctor Her, I think it was someone for, you know, the typical autoimmune doctor. I can't specifically think of what the name of it was, but um, so I saw them and basically just the same thing happened for over and over for years. Here's a test. Here's more blood work. Here's more tests. Here's more tests and nothing, nothing would come back, nothing. And they would just be like, you're, you're fine. You're fine. And I'd be sitting there like, do I look fine? <laughs> like, you know, like I don't feel fine. I feel the most sick I've ever been in my life. Like, I feel like my body is failing me. And they would sit mm. there and look me in the eyes and say, well, your blood works fine. Fine, <laughs> you know, and so that was probably the most frustrating thing was for years getting told you're fine, while I like my insides felt like they were ripping me apart, you know, like every piece of me hurt, every piece of me burned. It is mind blowing. Um, and so then I started to see, you know, continuing on with the doctors, and it was actually my dad's idea to go to Mayo Clinic. He was just he was fed up basically. Um, my parents weren't too involved in any of this because I was more far away and I, I'm not sure what they thought about it either I, for a while to me like for my authentic self how it felt for me I don't know I didn't feel much support in that aspect it was it was very hard I got a lot of support from Ryan and my boyfriend which was really really great um and my father kind of just got fed up with all how, how many tests I was having to do, you know, all these doctors, all these bills. And he's just like, I don't understand, like nothing, you know, what's going on. I felt like a lot of people didn't see me as sick, which was the hardest part, because when you're dealing with these chronic debilitating things that are going on inside of you, you look fine from the outside to others. And I think that's the hardest part that was for me, at least like in the beginning phases of like seeing all these doctors was that I felt like they would judge me and be like, you look fine. You're a young 20 year old, you know? And like my family, everyone, you're fine. Like you look fine. You, you come to see us and you're fine. And I think that's what was one of the hardest parts in that aspect too, especially with the seeing doctors is because they almost judge you on your like outside. And it's funny. Cause it's like, aren't you supposed to, you know, dig deeper, you know, you're the doctor here. Um, so yeah, so that was definitely hard. And so yeah, so then I ended up going to Mayo Clinic. And that's because everything was like all time 10, all time high. I actually I have a little list here, I can read you off yeah. if, if you wanted. I was gonna say because I have this is like, I dealt with these things on a daily basis. This was my every single day life. Um, I like to describe it as I was a shell of myself. And that is not me sugarcoating it. Like, that's how I felt. That was me personally. I felt like a shell of myself. I felt like I was not living. I felt like I wasn't even surviving. Like, I felt like I was just there. Like, nothing. I, I felt like I had no hopes and dreams anymore. Everything just felt taken away from me from this agonizing pain that I was going through on a daily basis. Um, and I did mention before, sorry, I, I don't mean to like be confusing, but I did mention before that I had that job at the salon. I ended up having to quit because that's how sick I was. Um, no one at that salon respected me whatsoever. They kept telling me that I had to work through the pain. I even vomited once at my job and they told me I couldn't go home. Um, it was, it was horrible. I got treated terribly at that, at that hair salon. I, I did not agree with at all how they treated me. And I was so sick at the time and just no one cared either. They were like, you're here to work. That's all. Um, so you could have done though, was to get out of that environment because like I go to the hair salon and I go to like an organic yeah. one and I still, and I'm like, Oh, like so much hairspray and all the chemicals. It's just like, mm -hmm. probably so bad. Oh, 100%. And I guarantee that had something to do with all of, you know, the added it, adding on to everything else, you know, all the toxins and things that were already in my body as a whole. And then adding on being in a chemical environment, it definitely did not help me. Um, so yes, it was amazing that I got out of that. And so before Mayo Clinic, these were the things that I were dealing was dealing with on a daily basis. Um, severe dizziness, lightheadedness, debilitating widespread body pain, and literally every single inch of my body hurt both sides. It wasn't just like one. There would be random days where like one, let's say, would hurt more than the other side, but it was just everywhere, every inch of my dang body. Um, pain to touch the body or skin, as I mentioned, um, weakness in my arms and legs. So yeah, I couldn't do this. And then the other side of that is when I would shower, I would actually sit down 
this was for a good like three years. Like I wouldn't even shower standing up anymore. I didn't, I, it's, it took everything in me to not buy one of those chairs. Like I refused. Cause I was like, I am not, I am 20 years old. I'm not going to buy one of these chairs. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, I'm not old, you know, like I shouldn't be doing this. And I'm very happy. I didn't cause I got through it clearly, but yeah, I would often sit. I could not even stand a shower. Just standing for that long would make my legs feel so weak. I couldn't even do it, which is why I often, as you could tell, probably from like the couch to the bathroom to back to bed, I didn't do much either. I didn't, I didn't exercise. I didn't move around. I could barely take care of myself. That's also, I guess, old symptom. <laughs> Literally, I couldn't take care of myself because of how bad everything was, um, which also is um, why sadly we used to eat out a lot too. And I know that that adds, of course, adds a lot to it as well. Um, and then along with all of that severe abdominal pain, severe abdominal bloating, most days I would look pregnant. Anything I ate just like blew my stomach up anything, no matter what. Yeah. Anything like it was just immediate, just super bloat. Um, and then along with that, most times I ate, I would just get nauseous. Or along with that, I wouldn't even have an appetite. I can't express how many months I would just, I could easily have just not ate because I didn't even have a single appetite at all. Everything grossed me out. Everything was just like, yeah, no, nope, no, nope, I don't want it. And it was really hard. It was really hard. That's why those first stages of intro were really hard for me because I was so I had no appetite. I had no anything. And it's like, you have to force yourself. You have to give yourself the nutrients. You have to heal. And so that was hard, especially regarding all the stomach issues. Um, then along with that, digestion issues, PMS, extremely, extremely horrible periods with, and not just like cramping, of course, severe cramping. I would vomit and also like get to the point where I felt like I was fainting because I actually gone, I had gone to the, okay. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, I've probably gone to the ER like 10 times on my period for that exact reason. And I would go there. Yeah. And I would say, I think it's cause I'm losing, you know, like, I don't know, like, am I losing too much blood and no one would ever give me any answers or anything like never. And they would never correlate it with my period either. And it would be so frustrating because it, it was so evident that this was happening every time I got my period and no one cared. No one would listen. Gynecologists wouldn't even listen to me either. Um, and then, um, sorry, I'm reading my list right here, chronic fatigue. Um, so as you could notice too, from the couch to the bathroom, didn't have energy for anything. Um, chronic constipation. Now that was a big one too, cause wow, the amount of fecal matter that probably was stuck inside my bowels for years because of the amount of chronic constipation I went through. Insane, insane. Like, um, to paint the picture a little more, probably I'd go sometimes like seven days without going. Like that's how bad it was at some point. Yeah. Like, and I didn't know anything about enemas or juicing or, you know, any of these, you know, krauts or, you know, oh. juice. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And I didn't know about any of these things. So I just made it worse, of course. And of course, with the low appetite and no eating, that didn't help either, especially when you're dealing with chronic constipation. Um, malabsorption, I just felt like anything I ate, I wasn't really getting it. And it's funny because that's the gap since you've got this biosis showing right there. Yeah. Um, sensitivity to light and cold and hot, anything was like an immediate trigger, like really brightness. Like I, I would get an immediate headache. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't be in the sun that much. Um, and then in regards to cold and hot, I would like pass out in the summer sometimes because of how hot it was. Like I couldn't handle the heat basically, especially if I was in the sun. And then in the winter, I couldn't control myself. I would get like, like teeth chattering, like shivering. And there was just no control in my body with these temperatures. Like it was so all, all out of control, like every, and I noticed it so much between the seasons because in the summer I would be fainting. And then in the winter, I couldn't control it. Like I was just so cold all the time and nothing helped. Like I would layer, I would nothing, nothing was helping me on that aspect either. Um, and then this big, the, one of the biggest things that was probably one of my least favorite symptoms I dealt with was brain fog, severe, severe brain fog. A lot of people with fibromyalgia, that's like coined fibro fog. Cause it's very, very, it's like one of the most common symptoms with having a diagnosis of fibromyalgia. Um, and I know that there are so many others online who deal with this, who feel the same way. Like it makes you feel like you are not there. It makes you feel like you're a shell of yourself. Like I would sit there and someone would talk to me and I genuinely would just like not take it out any of it in. And then I'd be like, wow, I didn't even like, I couldn't even pay attention to that. Like, holy crap. Like, where am I? Like, where am I? You know? And how I described it to my um, partner, Ryan, I would, 
I always described it like this, like my brain fog. I felt like I was here. Like I felt yeah. far away. Like I would, I, I did like my best way to describe it is I just felt so far away, like in the background, almost like not present, not cognitively. I love that word because I just did not feel cognitively there. I just felt so like not there at all. Yeah. That was the hardest one for me too, because I would often, there would be times I was driving and then I'd be like, where am I going? And then I'd be like, this is scary. Like, this is not like, you know what I mean? Like, this is kind of like, that's a little scary. Like I, whoa, I just randomly am like gone. Like yeah. that was aside from the pain, that one really got me. And especially with how young I was, I was so confused. I'm like, I don't think other people my age are dealing with this, you know, like, I don't think they're just not able to talk to people or not able to feel like there, you know, like there, I guess mentally, I should say, because that's how it felt. Like I just didn't feel there at all. It's, it's that one was the hardest one for me, aside from the pain, of course. Um, depression, anxiety, and panic attacks, I would deal with those a lot. Um, anytime the pain got too much, like I genuinely couldn't control like my anxiety and I often had panic attacks, which probably made it all worse too, because creates a lot of chronic cortisol spikes, of course, through having panic attacks. And it, it would often happen at night because I would wake up in so much pain and I just like my, I, I just couldn't handle it, you know? So I ended, I end up just breaking down. I end up having panic attacks. So I dealt with that a lot previous to gaps as well. Um, acne and severe dandruff and itchy scalp. I could like do that and it would be like snowing. <laughs> um, I had a, I, yeah, I would, I would be snowing everywhere. It was bad. I had a lot of that, those issues as well, which is so odd. Cause there's so many different, I dealt with such a wide, that's why I just think it's so mind blowing how it was just such a wide scheme of all of these symptoms too, you know, like, I don't know, just so many. Um, and then hand tremoring, aside from the losing the grip, my hands like started to shake. And I guess I just, I just feel like adding this because it's so accurate and it, it irks me till this day. Mayo Clinic wrote in my notes, I have all my notes from Mayo Clinic. They wrote that I exaggerated my hand tremor. The doctor wrote that. The doctor wrote that I was exaggerating my hand tremor. Wow. And it that hurt me so much to see that, like going home. And it's like, this is what doctors, you know what I mean? This is how they're portraying people who are trying to get help, you know? Like they're assuming and basically You're, saying. Yeah, it was like the most vulnerable part of you. And then it's like. Yeah, so yeah. It's, I know not all doctors are like this. I'm definitely, definitely not trying to say that, but it's like pride. Yeah, yeah I'm not either. I'm not either. I do want to say I'm not either. <laughs> of course. But rather than just being like, oh, I can't help you. It's like, you know, you must be the problem. Like, I can't admit that. Yeah. I don't know. And like, I've had to do that. Like, I can't help you with this. You know, like mm -hmm. you need to see this person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're not superhuman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that one, that definitely, that one irked me a lot until this day. I'm just like, Oh, I hope that person is not doing that to other people with fibromyalgia and all these different problems. Um, and then aside from the hand, hand tremor, tremoring, um, heavy neck. I don't really know how to describe that symptom besides saying heavy neck. Like I couldn't like mm. hold, like how I can hold up my head right now and be fine. It would feel like an elephant was on me. Like I could to paint the picture better I remember every single day I would drive to work downtown to go to my hair salon I would cry the whole way because I just like couldn't like I wanted to be able you know I have to drive but it hurt so bad and I would lay back and it wouldn't do anything to help but then I'd lay forward nothing and that that one was so weird that was the weirdest one because I'm like I don't know how I'm supposed to fix this it's my neck you know like my neck should hold me up but it just it didn't feel like I could hold my he own head up that's why I say heavy neck I don't really know how to say that like it sounds like your body was just so weak yeah I mean yeah to, yeah that's a great way to put it honestly every even the neck yeah every single part um and then nausea and vomiting like to the max I cannot count I couldn't even tell you how many times I've been to the ER in the past like five years of my life probably more than like someone has been in their whole entire life like someone who's really old. I've probably been there like quadruple that many times. I was be right before gaps, like that year before gaps, I had gone probably once or twice a week, like each week usually. Cause like, it was just, I would get in these cyclical vomiting. That's why that's another symptom. I had cyclical vomiting. Like I would not be able to stop. Nothing would help me. Of course, like 
I know a lot of remedies now that are very, very good if that ever was to take place. But at the time, like I didn't know any of that. I just, I could not stop vomiting and I would even go to the ER and they couldn't even get me to stop vomiting. That was like the craziest thing too. I remember there was a couple of times where they're like, I don't know why you won't stop. <laughs> like you should, you should be stopping by now. And yeah, so that was hard. I, I've, I know that I've ruined my throat a lot from all the vomiting that's happened. Like I have like a cobblestone throat from the amount of acid that I have vomited up. Yeah. So I, I deal with like sore throat sometimes from that, but I I'm getting better. It's getting a lot better because I don't vomit anymore, thankfully. Um, yeah. But, but yeah. Um, and then breaking bones as a child, of course, growing up, not so much anymore as an adult, thankfully um, spraining joints, hypermobile joints. Here's an example for the ones out there who want to know. That's why they thought I had EDS for a while, because like I could do all the classic EDS things, the, the hypermobility. I can like touch the ground with like the back of my hands like that. Like it's all, yeah, my hand, it's all really bendy on me. <laughs> um, heavily bruising as well. TMJ, my jaw pops, I got like that going on. Um, shoulder and then lower back pain specifically. Like I had widespread body pain, but specifically like around those specific times. I don't know if it was going to the hair school or what, but like my shoulders, like, oh, terrible. And then specifically the lower back, but it's funny now with gaps, I think the lower back pain was from all the constipations very specifically, you know, cause that usually will cause a lot of backup in your back area. Um, and then deep hip and pelvic pain with sex. Um, having sex was very painful for me for years. It was not, enjoyable wasn't any like it was painful most of the time I just had pain everywhere of course the all over body but along with like my pelvic area specifically in my hips um and then low libido I had just had no sex drive I had no drive in general of course I feel like that comes along with the chronic fatigue too but, but yeah those were all the symptoms <laughs> okay so when did you start the GAPS diet um <laughs> I started the GAPS program around it was February of 2021. Yes. Sorry. I was trying to make sure I got the right year. Yeah. February, 2021. Yeah. Cause I'm on the full program right now. So pretty recent then. And did you start with intro or the full gaps diet? So I started with intro and I now know as a studied person that I should have started with full, especially with the constipation I was dealing with, but I ended up just throwing myself right into intro. Well, yeah, it's different for every person. You know, constipation can, it, it just depends. It's sometimes hard to know until you've done it, like which yeah. stage you're actually on because yeah, it can be very confusing and everyone's so different. And likely people have problems on both stages because they're dealing from so much crazy detoxing and um, yeah, healing that. Okay, I'm so sorry. Um, okay, was so distracting having a baby. I'm sorry. No, it's okay, I promise. Okay, so you started on intro and how did that go? Did you have a lot of die off or detox symptoms? Oh yeah. Um, worse than where you are already at? Like that's pretty much. Yeah, actually. Um, yeah, that's why I, when I tell people about how intro can be, like, especially if you had a severe symptom as me, it can end up making you feel a little worse. And I think a lot of people don't like hearing that. Um, but um, I... I did really well with trying to control it because I dealt with a lot of die off every single thing. Like, you know how each stage you add the new food in, you know, each stage, oh, you add this in for sex stage two, and then you can add an avocado at stage three. Every single thing that you had to add in, I reacted to severely, every single thing. And I went so, so, so slow. Um, for intro, I felt it was really hard to take care of myself. It was very hard. Like it was, it was a lot of accountability on myself. Like I credit, I give a lot, like, I'm just so proud of myself. I am so proud of me and all the like hard work I did too. Cause it was, it was a lot of making sure I stayed accountable to what I knew I had to do to heal. Um, like I had like a list every day where I'd be like, okay, I have to go do this. All right. I have to make the, like, I have to make my stock. Like I need to drink, you know, like I have to drink it three times a day. And like it was a struggle just to get up and make food half the time, especially while on intro. And then once like adding, like adding in that crowd juice, oh my gosh, I felt like it just like a train ran over me. Oh, it was, yeah, it was, yeah. I had a lot of reactions to like the fermented foods and a lot of their strong cultured foods too. Um, I had to go really slow with introducing like kefir 
I was really good with cultured cream. Cultured cream, I could actually introduce right away. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did great with that. Um, but on like the kefir, huh? That it's great for constipation. So your body was yes. probably, yeah. Yeah, no, it is. It was so amazing for that. Um, what was I saying? What, what um, was it? How slowly did you introduce fermented foods like sauerkraut juice mm -hmm. and stuff? Oh, very slow. I started probably at like, I think I accidentally... <laughs> I did a teaspoon probably the first time, which is why it was such a bad die off reaction. And then I think I went down all the way to a fourth teaspoon and then worked my way back up. So it was very, very small increments. Um, and same, like when I introduced avocado, it was like the smallest spoonful <laughs> like I could ever have. Um, and uh, let me, I'm trying to think of the other thing. Oh yeah, coconut oil was very hard for me. I, I got very nauseous and like vomity. I, I actually vomited from the avocado too because the how high fat it was. Um, it, yeah, <laughs> I had a lot, I struggled a lot with um, my liver and gallbladder throughout the whole intro. It really needed a lot of support, especially in regards to digesting the fat. I think my body had a really, really big shock you know, from just going on the gaps in general, I actually hear that's all, like common for a lot of people who don't have a lot of fat in their diet. And then they go on gaps and it's such heavy fat. You're, and that's what happened to me. My liver and gallbladder just started to get super sluggish. And so I started um, juicing early actually, because Dr. Campbell McBride, she'll recommend it if you have the bad constipation, how you can actually introduce it at stage two. So I did, I started juicing, I did carrot juice at stage two. Um, and that helped me so much in regards to like my liver and gallbladder and then also the constipation. And then I slowly added in the gap shakes as well. Um, the two green apples with some carrot juice, some celery, and then that beet juice. Oh, immediately I started noticing that stuff. It's crazy. The beet juice just like goes right into your liver and your gallbladder It is insane how much. Yeah, I found great relief with the gap shakes. Like it has helped my, it has given me so much support in regards to like my liver and gallbladder and digesting fat too. Yeah, that, that was amazing for me. Um, and then for the third stage, um, I'm trying to think. So yeah, the avocado was probably the hardest of the third stage because that's like the first thing you add in. Um, regarding the fourth stage, herbs were so hard for me to add in. I felt like I just kept, it was basically I danced the, you know, how Dr. Campbell calls it the dance. Um, it's accurate. Cause I really did. Um, I, the only one I didn't dance too much on was the second stage. Cause I stayed on the second stage for a total of almost six months. So that uh, was. So, so I have a question. So how long were you on the first stage for? Um, see, I, I think that one was only about a week, a week and a half. Okay, and then you moved on to the second stage, and often people, for, if you don't know, often people stay on the second stage for a long time because it's very healing. Um, it's still difficult because it's so limited, but um, yes, you can it is off of it. Did you start feeling good on the second stage? How long did it take you to start seeing some benefit? Yes, so actually, um, I did. Um, so I started February, March, April, May. I remember. I sorry, I want to like know specifically five months in specifically. So. I was still on the second stage um, and because I was right around transitioning to the third stage around this time, but I know I was still on the second stage when I started feeling like, uh, oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. Immediately, I'd say two months in, I noticed immediate digestive changes. I no longer was, aside, I want to say, aside from, you know, adding foods in and getting reactions, you know what I mean? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like how I felt on a daily basis. I was no longer dealing with nausea, vomiting, no longer dealing with severe abdominal pain either. That was the most crazy thing for me was having my pain start to go away in my stomach. Like every day I would just wake up and it would just be like a pit in my stomach of pain. So that one was cool. That was, like I said, that was two months in. So that was like some very big changes, even just very early on. It, it's so evident what our body can do when it's given the right environment to thrive. It's so awesome. And then around that five month area when I was still on the second stage, I was about to go to the third stage. I, oh, I was mind blown. I started seeing relief in the pain. Now that, that's what wow. took the longest. That's what took the longest though. Cause I saw a little relief. I wouldn't say I was good. You know, like I still was dealing with things. It wasn't more until the yeah, I'd say teetering around the fifth and sixth stage where I woke up one day and I was just like, Ryan, 
I feel good. Like my body, like, I, you know what I mean? Like I was so like, I could, I was jumping up for jumping up and down in joy. Um, cause my body actually started to feel good and I would wake up not in debilitating pain. I, I could start to do this and it was actually okay. Um, so yeah, that was, that was really amazing. And so that was the sixth stage. So I would love for anyone who's doing gaps, I think are like the pause. way we're brought up. Oh, sorry. Pause. Um, it's not you, your internet just cut out. So oh, I'm sorry. I have to go back a couple, like a minute, maybe. You were just saying something about when you went on to the sixth stage, your pain. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, so when I went on the sixth stage, I really felt like all of my pain really started to go away. And that's what was so mind blowing to me because that was like months in then at that point, you know, this was like so long in. And it, I just, I can't express how amazing it felt. Cause I remember waking up and it was, it was like weight off of me, you know, like I, I could do this and I'm like, Oh, Whoa, like, Oh my gosh. And I remember I could start to do my hair again. Cause I wouldn't, I didn't do my hair for so long. Cause I couldn't put my arms up and I would slowly be like, Oh, wait, I can keep my arm up for a while. Like that's pretty crazy. Um, so it was these small things that really like kept me going that kept me on this journey. And a big thing that I would love for anyone who had any sort of similar symptoms to me, like, you know, out there to know if they especially want to try gaps, it is going to take time. <laughs> it really will take time. And I think our generation is a bit brought up to believe if it doesn't happen in one day or, you know, a couple of weeks that, oh, it doesn't work. That's not for, you know what I mean? Oh, it's not working for you. And I would heavily, heavily advise anyone to just stick with it, like on it, like, if I could give advice to anyone doing it, if, especially through those intro, because it's really hard when you're dealing with all that, the sickness coming up, the, the die off, all these, you're already so sick and then you're dealing with die off, you're trying to control it and it's worth it to stick it out because I can say from my own experience, it was, and it was worth it to stay on the second stage as long as I did too. And I know that it's hard. Like I, I don't sugarcoat. I think that's the beautiful thing that I do. Cause I don't, I don't like to sugarcoat it to people. Cause it is, it's, it's a challenge. It was so mentally challenging on the second stage. There were days where I cried because I knew I didn't want to eat soup. I was crying over food. Yeah. And I, I look back now and I'm just like, it's so wild how much emotions are attached to food too. I, I often think about that, you know, a lot, but that's kind of how the stages went. And when I started seeing improvement, but yeah. That's so cool. And yeah, wow. Like I'm surprised you stuck with it because that's a long time to go without seeing success really. Yeah. And like I said, I did see like there was the gradual, like my stomach really like it was the stomach stuff really started improving in those earlier months. But it that pain did not start to subside until a bit later. And like I I'm thankful because there were days where I was like, is anything going to happen? You know, like is something going to happen? Um, um, yeah, I've mentioned this before, but it's so good to keep like a food journal or something. Or even just when you start gaps to write down all of your symptoms, because usually you're focusing on like the pain. That's like your main one, but often that that's so significant and that's the last one to go. So if you don't, and like you can just, oh, you can notice, sorry, symptoms can go away and you can totally not even notice because you're so focused on the pain. So it's like so important to write those symptoms down so that you can, when you're like, oh, I think I'm going to quit gaps. And then you look back and you're like, wait, my period's not crazy anymore. I haven't gone to the ER, you know, all these little things. Oh, my back pain's gone. Those little things just show that you're on the right track. And so it's so important to keep a note of those. Would you agree? No, yeah. 100%. I actually, I, I should have mentioned that, but I actually kept a journal, especially through those very, very big, like the intro stages. I think that's one of the, I agree with you. I think it's one of the most important things you could do if, especially if you're doing it yourself. Let's say you don't have a coach, you don't have a program you're helping you like do with the program itself. See, being a journal will help you keep yourself accountable. It will help you track your symptoms. I, it was so beautiful because I love the way you just said that. Cause I, it's funny. I say that to people now too. It's we're very focused on the worst one, you know, like that worst symptom that we're really like, and for me, that was the pain. And it's, it's, you're so right. Cause there was months where I would, that was the only thing I'd focus on, but you, you, you heard that long list. I had all of those things started to go away. My migraines, my headaches, like, and it's funny because 
I feel like the big ones are what we even remember too. Like my biggest ones I remember are my stomach and my pain. And it's because all these other things, they just slowly dissipated as I continued to go through the program. And it's so crazy because it's the way you worded that is very perfect because we really do. We really focus on what's the worst, the worst thing. And we often forget to kind of reflect and be like, wow, I used to deal with this every day or, oh, I was really nauseous when I ate that. And now I can eat that and I'm fine. Um, and it was those little things that truly kept me going that really did. And I had to often remind myself, I had to be like, Madeline, we, we just overcame this, you know, we just overcame that symptom. So we're on the right track. Like, and it's a lot of, I think, a mentality as well of like healing in general, kind of what we were talking about before too. Like you have to, you know, you believe you're going to heal and that it will take place. And I think that's a really big factor of it as well. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. Wow. So are you still on the GAPS diet? Yes. Um, I am on the full GAPS program. I have about a year left to go. I've been on it for, yeah, about six months on the full gaps program so far, or like five months, I'd say on the full gaps program so far. Um, so I have about a year and a half left. Um, I plan to do it for the full two years. I really want to heal and seal, you know, my those deepest layers of my microbiome, just so I can, you know, go back to living more of a Weston A. Price nursing traditions, 80, 20 type of lifestyle. Cause that's what I plan to do in the future. I've seen great results. Like, um, like I can, I can eat now properly prepared nuts and seeds. Like I don't have reactions or anything like that. It's really cool actually. Um, yeah. And I, that's why I'm super like, I'm, it's funny. Cause I think people hear two years and they're like, that's so long, but I, to me, it's so worth it to be able to go back to normalcy. You know what I mean? Like to be able to go back to an 80, 20 lifestyle to be okay, you know, to be healed actually. It's, I'm, and I know food is emotional. You're so right and everything. And we try to make food like a big part of our house. Like we eat together and everything. We don't just rush it as best we can, but yes, but like it is just diet. And it's like, what are you going to live couch bound for the rest of your life in chronic pain with migraines and you have brain fog and you can't even, you know, it sounds like you were de- rapidly declining. Like it's like, oh, 100%. It seems like dementia was in your future. I mean, that sounds terrible, but like, the way you describe it. So it's like, are you going to live like that? Or are you going to just change your diet and like, yeah, do some coffee enemas and some detox practices? Yeah. And you're very accurate to say that. And I think it's good to be blunt like that, especially in regards to chronic pain and such debilitating issues, because it's accurate. It's, it's really about, I don't like, I know this might, I don't know, sound funny, but I often think it's like, how bad do you want it? You know, like how bad do you want that to not be where you are. Like, do you, do you want to stay in this place of sickness and complete and utter sickness of literally debilitating pain every single day of your life? Or do you want to maybe just make these small gradual changes, you know, each day, try to implement new things. And I, I, my heart goes out to anyone who's like contemplating it or feeling like it's too much because it is a big program and it's a lot, but it is so worth it because my life has forever been changed. Like, as you said, like, I love that you say that, that I was on the path to dementia because it honestly felt that way. Well, it felt, you know, like, especially in regards to the brain fog, like I didn't even feel like a human. Like I, like everything about being human, I felt this was like stripped from me basically, you know, I couldn't have hobbies. I couldn't have passions. I couldn't have, because I wasn't even physically able. Like it wasn't just like, I couldn't think about it. It's just because I wasn't even physically able. I I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to do anything. And And as you mentioned, like, as I mentioned before, like I was active as a child, like I grew up doing gymnastics, cheer, a lot of outdoors things. I was often outdoors and it was a big, I think that's where the depression anxiety came in so much too. Cause it was just like an immediate, like your life is over, you know, like that's how it felt. Cause it's like everything I love to do, I could no longer do ever, ever anything. So that was huge. So how did you even find gap Sorry, Cause something so you're the third interview that I've done, which I'm really excited to share all of these. But um, one thing I've definitely noticed between all of you is really like, like you said, motivation. Like you're all like commit, like commit for life. No one was half in there. You guys were all like, I'm doing this. And so like, how did you know that this was going to help? You know what I mean? It's just like to go through something for three months with not really much benefit yeah. or five months until you really saw pain reduction. Yeah. It's like, how did, how are you so like committed, I guess, and motivated? 
it was a lot of, like I said, I think it's just those little baby like steps that I kept seeing of like little improvements that truly kept me going. Cause like everything didn't subside like fully. Like I, I personally, like I tell people I have reversed fibromyalgia and IBS cause I firmly believe that. And I know I'm not done with the program, but like, I don't deal with these things ever anymore. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's gone. It's beautiful. It's just, I don't have it. Hmm? You don't have any body pain? Um, no, I do have to say I have been doing nervous system regulation things. And I've noticed that if I kind of open doors to certain parts, I'll get pain. And I've, this is kind of like on your question of like, if you tried any other therapies or anything like that, um, I've noticed since doing nervous system regulation that I randomly will experience these pains, but I think it's because I'm unlocking trauma in my body and our, our trauma, it's, it's very insane. It's been mind blowing to me how much our trauma, I feel like correlates with our pain as well. Um, mm -hmm. but besides doing the nervous system regulation work and feeling like random pain comes up from these sessions I'm doing nothing. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And, um, if I were to experience it, it's so awesome because it's never as like, this is why I say I'm healed because I don't feel like I have fibromyalgia at all or IBS. Like I feel like I'm just trying to heal and seal still like those deepest layers. And I sometimes will deal with die off. I'll sometimes deal with, you know, adding some new foods in. Cause you know, there's still a lot of foods on full gaps that you can like reintroduce and add in. I still haven't added all of them. So it's more of dealing with that right now. It's not necessarily like that big list of symptoms. It's beautiful. It's this like nothing I deal with. Yeah. It's, it's really awesome. That's so cool. I'm so happy to hear that. So with the, um, the, sorry, the nervous system training thing, yeah. when you become a gaps coach at some point, do you think that's something that will be really beneficial to like fibromyalgia people is kind of like, you could create something that kind of puts those two together to make, I don't know. I just feel like you have so much to offer for people that in your same shoes and really need to attack it from all angles. <laughs> Thank you. No. And I, I completely agree with you. Um, I didn't even find, so I like, you know, I had, I've gone through gaps already. Like I have been on, like I said, I've been on the full program for about like five months now. I just found this like whole nervous system regulation type work, um, as of this January actually of like 2022. So I've just like started doing this and yes, I would love to kind of mesh the two together. Um, it's actually funny because nervous system regulation kind of takes place during gaps as well, which is why a lot actually took place naturally doing gaps intro, you know, we're focusing a lot on detox and, um, making sure our drainage is taking place. And a lot of like nervous system regulation is making sure that your drainage can take place and your lymphatics aren't clogged up with any sort of toxins or any metals. Um, and it's funny because with gaps, we're actually avidly doing that. We're doing our Epsom salt baths every day. We're doing our um, dry brushing, our gisha, all these different like detoxing things. Um, so it's like really cool to end up finding nervous system regulation after gaps kind of and realizing, because I agree, I really think if someone were to be going through gaps intro and then they also add in the nervous system regulation kind of on top, I think that someone could see immense like even, I think even faster results. Like, and I, I can't say, I guess I, I can't know for sure because I didn't do the two together, but I have seen such amazing results from the nervous system regulation that I've done so far in just these like three months. It's, it's pretty mind blowing. Yeah. And it's so also cool. interconnected. Yeah. Cause like there's the enteric nervous system, which is our gut basically. So like the gut brain connection and then like the gut nervous system connection is all so intertwined and I love it. It, it really it blows my mind. So cool. Well, okay. What else? Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I scheduled nap time around this interview, but <laughs> I think she's going through a growth spurt and is a bit hungry. Um, so I'm like losing my focus, not trying to, but um, what else? What else? Is there anything else you want to touch on? I know you were like a vegan vegetarian before and you wanted to mention how you feel that meat is really healing and animal products are quite healing. Yeah, I do. Cause I, I know for a fact that that had a lot of like negative effect on my health in general, especially while like starting to acquire those symptoms at such a young age. And when I was that senior in high school, I had already started dabbling in vegetarianism. I wasn't like a vegan or anything like that, but I was dabbling in the vegetarianism. Um, and it wasn't until like a few years later where I, I know I was like a vegan avoiding cheese, avoiding all animal products. And it really like, everything just kept declining. So I know, like, I, I just feel in my soul that like 
it would have helped me if I could have at least just added some meat to my diet. Um, because there's such a lack of nutrients that happens to the brain when we're not eating animal products, because there's a lot of vitamins that are actually only in animal products. And I was mind blown to find that out, you know, through nourishing traditions, through gaps. And yeah, finding that out, I, I just really started to reminisce and think like, wow, like that really added probably to my symptoms that added to my pain that added to everything. And if I were to maybe just have yeah. nourished my body properly, at least a little bit in that sense, I do think that I could have seen at least an improvement at the time, but I didn't because I was very much coped right. up and wrapped up. Yeah. Brainwashed into all of that propaganda and meat's bad and you're a bad person if you eat it. And really? yeah. And I, I just, I'm very happy that I came out of that. Um, I meant to say, I don't think, did I answer how I found gaps? No, not how you found it. Okay. I'll tell you. Cause I just, I wanted to tell you, cause I forgot. And just so you know, too, um, I actually, it is mine. I, till this day, I am just mind blown at how I found it too. When I say that I have never really watched prior to gaps. Like I never really was one to watch your baby's eyes are so cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's so cute. Um, I was never one to watch like health people online, you know what I mean? Or like these, like, I don't know, homesteady or like life type of videos where let's, sh I'm going to show you what I eat or here's this program I'm doing. One day I was just scrolling on YouTube here, sitting on the couch and all of a sudden bumblebee apothecaries gaps, like the literal, like gaps for dummies popped up for me and I was just like wow. what is that and that's why I I know that not everyone is religious but I just thank God because there is like no reason why I found that there's no it, it the whatever anyone wants to believe the universe what I just thank God because he gave that to me and it, it's just so mind-blowing I just honestly like till this day I'm like I don't know how I found it like I just popped up to me yeah so that was really cool and then from there on it was just like a ball effect like I just I just rolled with it <laughs> hopefully this video will do that for some people like they'll just be sitting in their pain and then we'll be like Madeline how she overcame for about fibromyalgia and like, that's what? that's really what it was like I watched this video and I love Bumblebee Apothecary she's a great um advocate for gaps at a woman she's a, I think she, yeah she's a certified gaps coach too um oh my gosh hearing that first video I was just like healing can happen like you know what I mean like wait, I've never heard this. Like I just got told by 50 billion doctors that my life's over basically at 19. Um, great. Let's see how this goes. And then I find this, that's no, no, your life is not over. You can heal. It's up to you and changing your nutrition and all. It's just crazy because none of these things are talked about in like the medical field. I feel like in that sense of like changing your lifestyle or your diet or you know, do you get out in the sun every day? Do you make sure to have movement every day? You know, all these things are just so important. And it's just crazy because this is all, I feel like this is, Gaps was just such a godsend for me because it truly changed my life. No, I'm, I'm the same, like with you. I'm just like, our bodies are designed to heal and like everything that is on the earth, like everything naturally occurring generally, I don't want to say everything because I don't really know, <laughs> but like on purpose you know, the sunlight, the natural waters, like the food that just grows in the earth or, you know, fish and the sea, like all these things are good for you. Just like whatever is natural is good for you. And then, you know, it's like the Michael Pollan quote. It's like, if it's a plant, eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. It's like so simple. Like That's, I love that. I've never heard that. That's so awesome. That's yeah, a great quote. it is. Yeah. He, he has a book. I think it's food rules or something like that and he has all these like funny little sayings in it um yeah oh that's well this is so encouraging I'm really excited um to like share this and yeah I hope this does pop up when people are just like bed bound wondering how they're going to get over fibromyalgia because honestly yes <laughs> yeah and we'll share it and yeah and we'll yeah I'll be sending people as soon as you become a gaps coach even before you know I don't think We'll send people to you that have fibromyalgia or are dealing with that because you're going to be so helpful. Um, so we already said that we could find you on Homesteading Heartland is her Instagram account. And she does a really, really good job documenting stuff. Um, Thank you. Thank it even challenged me a little bit the other day. You were like, had like beef tongue and all these other crazy things. And I'm like, oh, like she's really going for it. And she's really 
it's not just like one of the 500 videos on how to make bone broth. She's like teaching you how to make cow tongue tacos and stuff. So it's really fun to watch you on there. She's super involved in Instagram. And then you, anything else, where else can we find you? Yeah, I actually have my own website, homesteadingheartland.com as well. Um, it's a blog and then I, I make um, homemade tallow skincare as well. Um, I'm really passionate about that just because it was so hard for me to find clean skincare, especially while on gaps. And so tallow became my best friend, beef fat, actually. Um, I render it to be cosmetic grade so it doesn't smell like beef or anything. Um, but yeah, and I make lotions, balms. Um, salves too I do like more of like a herbal apothecary type line where you know herbal healing salve a pain away salve um but yeah and then on the blog portion I basically share recipes kind of like what we're saying um and then I'm also planning to share a lot more on like my gaps journey as well and then I, I also plan to have a lot of gaps information on my website too I'm still in the beginning of like the blog and everything I'm still trying to find a good pattern of like posting and, you know, like getting it all formulated. So I'm definitely new and I'm learning, but I am very excited. And yeah, you could find me there, homesteadingheartland.com. So cool. And do you ship your products in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. She's based in Illinois. Yeah. Yes, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So clean skincare, that's super helpful with herbs and everything in it. Herbs. <laughs> um, my Australian's coming out. And <laughs> Instagram, vlog, great. I can't wait for you to become a gas coach. Like that's going to be so you. awesome. Yes. Um, your story is really powerful. I hope so many people hear it and share it. And, you know, unfortunately, if the experts can't solve it, we can send them to Madeline and she'll help everyone out. Um, yeah. yeah, it's so fun to meet people who are so passionate about gas too. Um, I'm just like, it's contagious and your story is amazing. And yeah, just thank you so much for taking the time to share with everyone because I think you're really going to change some lives. It's going to be awesome. Thank you for having me. No, I really can't thank you enough because I, my goal with like being online in general was just to like show people that it's possible. You know what I mean? Like when I was so sick in those like really dark times, like I, the only thing I wanted was just hope. You know what I mean? And like that little spark of like life of is something available, you know, that's you know, that's available to me that can actually help. And for years, it just, it was just a dark tunnel, you know, and it's just crazy. Cause I feel like gaps is so much that light at the end of the tunnel that you've been looking for. And just that hope that you need that healing can take place. Like our bodies are designed to heal and we are designed to heal as human beings, like, especially even ourselves. And I think that's just the beauty of it too. Um, and it's hard, it is painful, it is a process, and it takes time. One of my favorite quotes from Dr. Campbell McBride actually is damage happens fast, but healing takes time. And that can't, that is the one of the most shortest, but most powerful quotes I've ever heard, because it's so true. Healing takes so much time. And I think if we were to give our bodies respect and the love that it needs and nutrition it needs, our bodies will respect us and give it what it needs, which is healing. And I think that's just such a beautiful process. Hi, thanks for watching my video. You can feel free to comment or like below, or you can follow me on Instagram or on my website.